Mimi LeBanc, better known in the real world as Sue Hodge. Welcome to Talking Pint, Sue. Great to see you. Oh, Nigel, you nutty boy. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh, it's still there. I'm going to blush in a moment. Ooh. Amazing. I mean, hello, hello. It was when it first came on the televisions and I watched it. I loved it. And you kind of came into it a few years in. It was this new injection. This pocket dynamo. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but it led to even more complications in Renee's life, didn't it? <laughs> I know, she was sort of, you know, fearless, wasn't she? A bit like me, really. Um, shortened to the point. Um, You've done lots of things in British comedy. I Prior have indeed. That. I have indeed. I mean, I started, um, I was only 14 uh, when I started with the Dick Emery show. And my first pantomime was with uh, dear old Charles Hawtrey. The carry on. The carry on. Yes. And a yeah. very, very particular British sense of humour, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the carry on films. I mean, they're all classics, aren't they? I know they get a bit of a, a you know, a, a ribbing now, but... Um, well, what doesn't? You know, we get to a stage where we're a little bit frightened to do or say anything, aren't we? Well, and it's very interesting that, you, that you're here today and you saw this polling that, that Professor Goodwin produced yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that asked specifically about Dad's Army and Elaine yes. Half Hot Mum because they were the two programmes mentioned in Penny Morden's book. But it equally could have been a low, a low. Now, I was, and I'll tell you this, I was in... 2015, as the general election approached, asked what British comedy shows I liked, and a low, a low was on my list. I love it because it takes the Mickey out of absolutely everybody without fear or favour. Um, and I was really, really laughed at by you know the establishment here. It just sh it just showed. But I mean, I the wasn't. French were randy, the Germans were kinky, the English <laughs> the English were stupid, weren't they? I mean, who could possibly take offence that when when the, when the the Germans had to speak English sometimes, and all they went was far 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 fa, cup of tea. You know, I mean, oh crumbs! It was tongue in cheek. Wasn't so you're it? not ashamed of being in the lower I'm Ashamed! Life. I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. And and um, it appears that Channel Five's not ashamed of it. We've just made a documentary. It's not out yet, but it will be out later this year. So I've got a whole new fan base. I've got young children. You know, now the next generation around, and it's still. Show 95 countries worldwide. When you've had a career, as you've had from a young age, long career, is it a good thing or a bad thing that you become so well known for that one role? Well, I mean, it does um, limit you after that. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I will never ever be thought of as anybody but Mimi LeBunk. Yeah. I mean, you know, but, but, but. I've done so much work because of it as well. I've done so much charitable work, um, you know, uh, been involved with Jubilee, uh, yep. veterans. I'm going off to the Isle of Wight in a couple of weeks and I'm opening a veterans hub over there. So um, it's, uh, and, I, and I love all that. You know, the people who, well, that's the reason we're still here because they fought the wars they did. You know, so I'm very proud to actually be part of where I can go and give something back. I mean, the fabulous public here gave us so much, so much support with the program. You were like loved, that. weren't you? The cast we was loved. We were loved. We still are. Yeah. And we still are. And the ones on the left, bless them, there's a few of us. And we're still very, very good friends. And we, do, as I say, we do lots of conventions. We raise a lot of money. And yet the BBC wouldn't commission that today, would they? They would not. They would not. But they, they, they can't. They couldn't possibly do that now. I mean, it, it's, it's a shame, but it, I tell you what, it's never going to go away. Can we reverse all this political correctness, do you think? No, I don't think we can. No? No, I think it's gone too, like, too, too, too far now. But all we can do is hang on to the memories that we have, and that's still memorable now. I mean, I've, I've written a book. I was asked to write the book, so yeah. I, I did. Um, it's still going on. My life is still very much alone alone. There ain't a lot of goodbye, goodbye there. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to hear it. And you've managed. You live in Lincoln these days. And, I and, do. And we were up in Lincoln the other week but you were away and we missed yep, you yep. but I mean how is it I don't understand I'm really really confused Sue I mean you must have seen you've come to the red zone today yep. um, there's a risk to life out there on London streets but I mean, how on earth did you get here because 
I've got a brain and I can say, well, look, the trains won't be running, this one. So if I want to do Nigel Farage's show, which I do, um, I'm going to go down the night before and I don't care where I stay, but I'm going to be on that show because I want to. <laughs> so you don't like being told what to do by government? Mm, no, never have, never have. And I don't like the scaremongering and all that silly nonsense. I've, I've been listening to you, uh, yeah. your programme earlier. And I mean, for goodness sake, yes, it's hot. I know it's hot but I'm not completely dumb I know um thank you for the drink I know I've got to drink lots <laughs> well, well I think they may I think they may be water but I don't know <laughs> yeah it's it, it, it but this is a nanny state isn't it sir I'm afraid it is. I mean, I come from um, a background of my mother. When I'd say to her, I'm cold, and she'd go, here you go, there's a sweater, put that on. Um, that, that's where, how we were brought up. And Essex was where you grew up, yeah? And Essex was where I grew up, yeah. My father died when I was 15. My mother brought me up virtually single-handed. It wasn't easy, but, uh, hey, we came through all right. And why acting? Why comedy? Why? What, well, pushed you, what, what has it pushed you into all that? Um, it's what I've always wanted to do. Um, a lovely actor, um, um, J Jimmy, who actually said to me, Sue, he said, uh, I worked with him, and he said, uh, your forte is going to be comedy. I can see that. And I said to Mummy, you know, uh, and this is what I wanted to do. And she said, well, it's not going to be easy, Suze, you know, with no, no daddy and et cetera, et cetera. She said, but if it's what you really mm. want, I will support you 150. But I tell you now, don't you muck this up. It ain't a rehearsal. Um, she said, because there's not going to be any going back. If this is your choice. Yeah, this is the one lesson that we learn. From all, I've been doing this now for a year, from the Talking Pints guests that come in from all different walks of life, you know, many of whom have had difficult starts, overcome mm -hmm. adversity, and the one big lesson from Talking Pints is follow your dreams. If there's something you want to do in life, you need to do in life, get out there and do it. The Pursue world it. is your oyster. Go and get it. Yeah. Now, tell me about this book, please. Well, this book, I mean, it's actually... I did... I, I actually wrote this book a couple of years back now, and I self-published it, but I got um, a lovely Austin Macaulay contract um, that just came out. So this book, yeah. uh, they are on sale now, yeah. but this one is not. This is for you, Nigel. Ah, to Nigel. Thank you for having me on my show. Well, oh, Sue, there we are. There it is. This book is out there. It can be purchased. Mimi's Memoirs. Hello, hello. A magnificent picture on the front of the cast. Um, and this book's for sale. And a foreword by Richard E. Grant, which is oh, rather nice. I know nice. my old friend Richard. Bless his heart. That's rather nice. And you're, you're also still touring and travelling and doing yes, things. Yes, I'm still out with uh, Best of British Comedy with uh, Jeff Holland, with my producer um, Chris Gidney later in the year. I'm directing Chris Gidney's Panto. I'll be at Haverhill. I'm starring in that. And I have to just say, in case we suddenly get cut off, Nigel, when Mimi heard that I was giving you that book, she said, well, I want to give him something as well. So um, Mimi gave me this. Um, it, she said, be careful because it's still wet. But actually, it looks a bit limp and droopy to me. But I don't know why she wanted me to give you this no. wet celery. But well, hopefully we could do better than that. Well, but, but the wet celery did feature in a low low, did it not? Well, with one of the German officers. Well, I, I thought you might know about it. I personally And don't a flying think... helmet would be needed as well, wouldn't and, it? And, and possibly an egg whisk if you have Ah, I... Don't know whether we get short notice to manage with the egg whisk. And when you worked on this, and clearly you're still living it, as you say, and you, 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 you're going to live it for a long, long time to come, there were some pretty good other characters in that, weren't there? They were. I mean, this was uh, amazing. David Croft and Jeremy Lloyd, I mean, they just had... Uh, it was in the casting. They cast the most odd components, and somehow when you put all those components together, they would just seem to fit. I mean, Gordon Kay and Carmen mm. Silvera. I mean, I come from um, a sort of Shakespearean background, um, repertory theatre. So I was used to having a leading man and leading lady. And that's what they stood for to me. And then we were all these cogs and every cog was 
was valid. I mean, you know, the brilliant um, Arthur Bostrom with, you know, Crabtree and Guy Siner. I mean, that character of Lieutenant Gruber, he was so yeah. superb. <laughs> and of course, I've got my best friend. She's still my bestie. Vicqua, Vicqua, Vicky Michelle. Yes, who I've met before. Lovely, yeah. delightful and she's, lady. She's yep. gorgeous, gorgeous. And we're praying for her sister at the moment, who's not too well. And, um, and Herr Flick and Helga, I mean... Oh. Magnificent. Magnificent. Well, you may be, you may be Sue Hodge, but you're Mimi LeBlanc to me. And thank you for joining me on Talking Pints. Bit of pleasure. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you so God much. bless you.